In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. And so in Egypt, they said when you died, we still use the same terms today. We say grandmother passed last night. She passed on. Grandfather passed away. Passed always implied that they, that they died. Consequently, when the sun was high overhead, it finally reached its lowest point in the southern hemisphere. It died for three days. It was born again, December 25th, Christ's birthday. The Christos, the light of the world, is born again. He comes back, and as it crosses over the equator, we say that he has passed over from the death of winter to the new life of spring. So the Egyptians, almost 800 years before Hebrews knew about it, celebrated the first day of spring, and they called it the Passover, because the sun, which was dead in winter, has passed over the equator, so it's passed over. It's gone to the other side. In our language, we were alive, we're dead, we've gone to the other side. No, he was dead, and he's gone to the other side, which is life. He's come back. So consequently, the Passover is nothing more than celebration of spring, period. You know, give me a break. Everybody's got a religion. So you have in Hindu, Brahma, Vishnu, Siva. In Egypt, you have Osiris, Isis, Horus. In Christianity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Judaism got to have something, so they uh, they call it uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the Bible is a very important book in that it gives you a very good understanding of the culture, and once you start doing your homework and find out the biblical names were metaphors for something else buried, something deeper that's being talked about. Again, Solomon is Sol Om On, the, la the name of the sun in three languages. The truth is hidden in plain sight. And this is how they hide everything. If you are looking for the knowledge that has been hidden from us, if you want to know the meaning behind these symbols, if you want to know who controls the world, this ebook will literally unveil that to you. And ye shall know the truth, and truth shall set you free. I hear what this guy is saying, but I have just one question to the audience watching this video. I was told on multiple occasions in my past as a child that Jesus was not actually born on December 25th. He was born either in April or March. Uh, do any of you know when Jesus was actually born or did he even exist to you? Like, leave a comment down below letting me know because I am curious on what the overall opinion of Jesus' birth date is because I've always been told that it was not December 25th. Do plants have consciousness? Yeah. Well, let me drop back even further than that. Consciousness is fundamental. You cannot get behind consciousness. And the implication here is that the physical arises from the consciousness as opposed to consciousness arising from the physical, i.e. being something that's generated in the brain. And we're in the deep philosophical kinds of things, but that's pretty, pretty profound. Yes. Because everybody has thought, you know, I think, therefore I am. No, you am, therefore you think. Uh, it's kind of more appropriate. But it gets into you know, just everything. Everything is uh, interrelated at a level that's almost imp uh, definitely impossible for humans to contemplate. It's that big. Where do you think consciousness exists? Oh, consciousness is. We exist because of consciousness, not the other way around. Is consciousness... Is, is, see, if there's a Big Bang, I happen to have some problems with that, but... It says that consciousness created that and everything, the physical universe evolved from consciousness. This is a pretty interesting video to me. I actually was having a minor conversation with one of the subscribers on this channel about artificial intelligence being conscious or not conscious. And I found this video after that conversation, so I thought I would just add it in here because it is a pretty good topic on opinion. And I would like to be broken down further in maybe the comments of this video. What is your mindset as far as consciousness? I'm very curious about this because there's so many people with a different mindset on what consciousness is. For me, 
I personally believe consciousness to be an organic matter. For example, like they were talking about plants. I think plants are a conscious being. I think human beings are conscious because they're a living organic system. Now, when you break down into artificial intelligence and things like that, I do not necessarily believe that artificial intelligence is even literally intelligent. It's not. It's just a program. Now, when you get into what's called AGI, which is an artificial general intelligence, that is a different story than just standard AI, artificial intelligence. I think that once you reach AGI, it does become a little bit more sentient, but is it considered conscious? That is a good question. I would like to know what your thoughts are on that and your thoughts in overall conscious. What is your idea of a conscious being? So leave a comment down below letting me know because I'm very interested in hearing what everyone has to say about that. They just found what now? Piss off. Ain't no way I'm going to Australia, man. Ever. So scientists have just discovered the world's largest snake. This is absolutely insane. <laughs> it's not even in Australia. Oh, it's Amazon rainforest. Or oh, maybe I will come to Australia. So it's all good. So they discovered this giant anaconda, a new species of it, living in the Amazon rainforest. They actually discovered it underwater, which is great. So you're not even safe swimming. This giant anaconda can stretch over 10 meters long. This guy is swimming with it. He's diving with it to take a video. No way, mate. Absolutely flipping not. And if you think you can bench it, well, it weighs over 500 kilos. So good luck, Shan. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe the actual size of it. But scientists literally the other day over in the Amazon rainforest on a little mission. But you can rest assured that the thing is only in the Amazon rainforest forest as far as we know don't think it will be coming over to the uk anytime soon but imagine you're just walking down to the co-op or something you see one of those guys just chilling on the side of the road 10 meters long like that is just insane but yeah who knows what else scientists are going to find they've found so much recently i swear to god hit that follow button and i'll keep you updated i have some subscribers that are really down with animals and if they want to cuddle this snake Hey, more power to you but a 30 plus foot long snake that weighs a thousand pounds i think i'll pass a lot of companies that have like stars in their logo mm -hmm. are related to Masonic symbols. Yeah, like the Freemasons? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know that they worship like the bright sun or the bright star. And if you really look at it, in every logo that you see around like Carl's Jr., the Sirius FM dog, he has a star. Oh, it's a star. Yeah, at the NFL logo, there's a bunch of stars. Everything has a star in it. But also stars is just like super prominent in a yeah. lot of things. But also, I'll show you the ones that I found out. Yeah. So if you know what you're looking for these have uh, different symbols so mazda you know what the mazda symbol lo is yeah it's like a it looks the like owl. a bird kind of yeah it's yeah. the owl the owl is the illuminati oh like mola yeah. so hbo hbo if you turn it down it's an owl you turn your head to the side you see an owl <gasps> whoa i didn't take that in all right next one search of fox fox okay turn it to the side skull crossbones oh sh yeah. And then Taco Bell. You know what that is? You see the reptile eye? <gasps> Yo! That's crazy! That's crazy! Yo, it does look like that! No, it is a reptile eye. So it goes like this. It looks like a snake eye. Yeah, yeah. And the easiest one, Chase Bank. You know you have to look this up. It represents a... Which is a sun symbol. Wait, Chase Bank? Yeah, Chase oh, Bank. Oh, because it's, it's like, like the... The lines. The four lines connecting into a thing. And it becomes what? Like a version of a... Oh shit. And that's a sun symbol. And in every Chase Bank commercial, you can see that it's on the sun. These guys are really funny to me. I, I like their reactions to things, even though I think it really irritates a lot of people. But hey, I irritate a lot of people, so it is what it is. But as far as the symbols go, I do notice a lot of symbols in signs. Not necessarily to say that they're bad or they're trying to symbolize something satanic, but I do notice a lot of symbols. Like one of some of my most favorite logos in companies is FedEx and Amazon. I love those logo designs because in FedEx, there is literally an arrow in FedEx. And in Amazon, I like the smiley face because it's from A to Z. Like they get your packages from A to Z. And I think that's just so clever personally. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this every day. Stephen Hawking wasn't as disabled as you thought. Stephen Hawking's being on the list reminds me of a conspiracy I heard. That Stephen Hawking wasn't even actually a real person, but a character. So before he had a robot talking for him, he had a translator. Stephen, when did you first realize you wanted to be a physicist? <sighs> uh, 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 
I think I knew from about the age of nine or ten that I wanted to be a scientist. Or a model railways. How does he really know what he's saying? Was aimed in some way at finding out how the world worked around me. People are questioning how someone translates those grunts into actual sentences. It just doesn't add up to them. I think I knew from about the age of nine or ten that I wanted to be a scientist. Like, how is that being translated? It's like Han Solo translating for Chewbacca. Now, kind of how the media uses children as shields, people believe that Stephen Hawking was used as a shield. I've heard about this before. I personally do believe Stephen Hawking was a real individual. I do believe that he was a real scientist. Once he received his spell to speech, he was pretty much in full control of however he wanted to handle his situation. So I cannot believe that he was a actor living a false life under someone else's control. I, I really truly think that he was who he said he was and what he said he was. Now, as far as that guy being able to understand his grunts and his, his moans and mumbles, I have a feeling that stuff was rehearsed ahead of time. There was a understanding of what was going to be said during the interviews and things like that, and they were just kind of prepared for answers and things like that. But I could be completely wrong. Let me know in the comments and your thoughts about Stephen Hawking. If you think that maybe he was fraud or he was being controlled by a higher power or a governing power. But I really don't think he was. But let me know. Reality is the way that it is because that's the way humankind decided to make it. I'm about to wake you up. Pay attention. What's one times one? Times one is one. To multiply means to do what? To make more, right? Yes. Increase in number? Yes. Multiply? Yes. How can one times one equaling one be part of the multiplication table? It fails to satisfy the term multiply. It doesn't multiply, does it? What's an action times an action? You got some weed. Uh, no, no, I'm asking you. <laughs> what, Honestly, what I'm doing? asking you. Reason, reason, <laughs> reason, reason, reason. I want you to reason. <laughs> I don't know. What's an action times an action? A reaction, right? Okay. Have you ever seen an action times an action without a reaction? Have you? No. Because every, because equanimity is the currency of the universe. There's always an action times a react, a re, an action having a reaction. So how can one times one equal one? How can A times B just be A and not B? What happened to concept? Terrence, of these are late night conversations. These bro. are, no, these <laughs> yeah, are, are, this is the beginning of, of, of our understanding. It should fit. <laughs> okay, Go to calculator. Yeah, you I do got too. You. you got iPhone? What are we doing? I want both of y'all to do two separate things. I want to do the same thing to start with. Turn it to the side. Okay. All right. Now I want you to both hit the number two that the whole calculator show up. Hit number what? Hit the number two. Number two. two. Go to the square root. It is the second column from the left, third row. It'll have that square yeah. thing. All right. You 1.4. 1. 1. 1.414213563730095. Yeah. Holy crap. Now I want you two to do two separate things now. <laughs> two separate things. <laughs> I want you to multiply it by two. Hit times two. Equal. Don't you do it. Okay. And I want you to hit X to the third. X to the third, it's going to be All right, 2. 2. 8, 2. 2. 8, 4, 2, 7, 1, 21, 74, 61, 90, the same value you got yeah. by multiplying it by 2. Yeah. And he just cubed it. Divide it by 2 again, both of y'all. Divide, divide by two. it by 2. No, divide by 2, hit equal. <laughs> now, cube it again, hit X to the third. Yeah. You see that loop? Yeah. That's saying X cubed is equal to 2X, which is equal to X plus X. That's an unnatural equation. That's a mathematical fallacy. And that's the beginning of your math. Man, I really think this guy based a lot of his work off of one times one. Now, I'm not no mathematical genius. I, I really, I honestly, I don't know anything. To be completely 100% with you, I am very shallow, not the smartest. But when I was in school, I was educated that multiplication, I was taught that the X stood for how many times? That's why it's called times. Even when he said one times one means one how many times. It is a multiplication factor, but it's not necessarily how he's describing it. That's why there's other math to extend the math that that calculator failed. Again, I don't know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just spitting off what I was told in life. 
but I kind of fall in the same agreeance with what I was taught. One is how many times. It's not just one multiplied by one, it's one how many times, and it was done one time. But I could be wrong. Leave a comment on your thoughts. I'm not 100% sure who this individual is necessarily. I've seen him before. I've played a couple of his videos in the past. But uh, I just, this, I always find this interesting because I, I, it kind of goes over my head a little bit. I genuinely think the world went downhill when McDonald's took away the $2 sausage McGriddle off the all-day menu. Genuinely. Genuinely. People used to be happier. Now what? Now what, it's like $4? You used to be able to go to McDonald's at 5.47 p.m. and get a nice little sausage McGriddle for dinner for two bucks. Now what? It stops at 10.30? This is why people are depressed. This is why people are anxious. If maybe we could waltz up to a McDonald's at 7 p.m. and order a sausage McGriddle for $2 again like we used to be, people would be happier. I think it would solve a lot of issues. Thank you. I'm not going to lie. I genuinely think the world went downhill when we had free access to the internet. To be honest, we started complaining about some of the most craziest things. A 2x4 in 1918 had more than 60 rings in it. But yet the same size 2x4 in 2018 only has 16 rings. This is much more pest resistant. It rots way slower. It is stronger and all around better than this form and structure of wood. So what's the difference? And how does this impact our health and our DNA? You may be shocked. Victor Schauberger was born in the early 1900s in Austria. He studied forests and streams and noticed peculiar things that mainstream science at the time had no idea about. He went on to invent many different devices and techniques for logging, ones that he believed would enable the forest to be remain intact despite being able to harvest timber from. And what he warned against, unfortunately, was not heeded. The delicate balance in a forest is very important. When you cut down the biggest trees of the forest, modern forestry says you'll give more light to the smaller trees and they'll grow faster. They will grow faster, but at the cost of being much less structurally sound. You need the mother tree casting shade across all the other trees to help them grow slow and steady. But when you cut down the biggest trees, the sun warms up the soil, which actually negatively impacts the soil microbiome, the bacteria in the soil. A forest is meant to be shady and cool, and this causes a disruption to the health of the water in the ground and the beneficial bacteria, aka nutrients, that ends up in the food grown. Schauberger warned that this would affect human consciousness because the minerals and foods grown would have less nutrients. I definitely do not disagree with what this individual is saying for the most part, but to be fair to the two pieces of wood that he had for an example, looked like two different grades of wood. They didn't look like they were even the same type of wood. And that couldn't that could necessarily not be the case, but I think it is. And I also agree with what he's saying about why they do it. It is for marketing purposes. If, if they did have trees that were more structurally sound and had more fiber in them, then it would make sense for them to cut down the trees for business purposes. I don't necessarily agree with it because now they can grade the wood to have different durability and different qualities. Check this out. There was, I, I saw this, I was like, that's fake as, that's fake as F, mate. Somebody sent me on the email, I was like, nah, nah, until I saw the video. An unknown object seen in the skies over the airport. So according to our regulations, we had to close the airspace. Aircraft movements were suspended from 8.45 p.m. to 9.41 p.m. Airport staff say the first reports of the UFO... I, I, I just thought that maybe that's a reflection or something. This, this just doesn't seem right. It came in just after 8 p.m. from both air traffic controllers and civilians. Saw... And that, just to me, is like, uh, that, that, that's a, a, a screenshot from a bloody movie or something. I heard that some of the passengers whose flights just landed saw the object, which appeared as glowing lights. It was not a normal civil aviation flight. What it actually was, no one knows. Look at it! Look at the state of this, mate! And I'm telling you, I know what you're thinking! Ben, move on. This is effing fake. Wait till you see the video. I know I've said that a couple of times, but just... Right? During the hour in which airspace was closed, six flights were grounded and 12 inbound flights had to be diverted to nearby airports at Ningbo, Wuxi and Shanghai. In total, almost a thousand passengers were inconvenienced by the closure. Hey, right, here we go.
Have you ever seen anything like that in your life? Look at this thing as well floating about. Watch, it starts floating about. Look at it. Someone's been abducted right there. A UFO in China's skies forced Zhaoshan Airport to stop this is a different angle. operations on July 7th. Outbound flights were grounded after the unidentified flying object was detected by a flight crew. The incident has captured the attention of Chinese media. For now, the UFO continues to be a mystery. A spokesman from China's civil... Look at the thing! Just fly off! <laughs> what the hell, man? Look at the thing! Yeah. Watch! For now, the UFO continues to be a mystery. A spokesman from China's Civil Aviation Administration confirmed to ABC News that the matter is under investigation. Ah, yeah, it's under investigation. Yeah, you know, is what it is. You know, during the whole process of watching this video, I was trying to debunk what could it be. I thought maybe it was just high quality lasers that were beaming up into the sky for a light show or someone had their own little mini laser box, which I am thinking about buying one of those because they're awesome. Uh, and they were just playing with it and people were thinking it was a UFO. But the more the video was playing, it just become harder and harder to tell exactly what it was because if that was all real footage, all real news reports and things like that, Honestly, I have not a single clue what it could be. It did, did not look like a, a standard helicopter. It did not look like an airplane. It did not look like a drone. And I'm sure it wasn't a satellite either that close to Earth. So I am clueless. If you have any input on what this could have been, please let me know. AI can now officially read your dreams. When you look at anything like this grass field, your brain's neural pathways form a specific pattern, sort of like a heat map. And every possible thing you look at or can even imagine has its own unique pattern. When you dream, your brain behaves much the same way, forming brain frequency patterns based on what you're dreaming about. Well, Aza Raskin from the Center for Humane Technology announced that they've done some tests and what they discovered is impressive but incredibly alarming. They put a test subject inside an fMRI machine which can read brain activity and had them look at an image in this case an image of a giraffe and the machine mapped out their brainwave pattern they then hid the image and fed only the brain map data to an ai image generator probably a little more advanced than mid journey an ai that has never seen the original image of the giraffe nor had access to an internet database that stored the original image either it then generated strictly based on the fmri brain map data what it determined that the person was looking at and this is what it produced not exactly the same image but i don't think you understand what it means that AI can now turn this into that with this level of accuracy. And we're still quite early in this technology, so it's only getting better from here. Then they took it a step further. They showed the test subject in the fMRI machine a video, and on top of generating what the subject is seeing, they also wanted to find out if the AI can read your inner monologue, the words you think to yourself in your own mind that no one else knows about. The test subject watched this video and was told to narrate what was going on in the video inside their own head. Here, let's do it together. You ready? Did you get all that? Now again, given only the subject's brain activity heat map, this is what the AI determined the person was thinking. I see a girl that looks just like me get hit on the back and then she is knocked off. Probably a bit different than what you thought, but this is literally AI reading our minds and all it takes is someone's fMRI brain scan data. Our thoughts and dreams can now be leaked to the world. Give it a few more years and this technology will get near perfect. And sure, fMRI machines may look like this today, big, clunky, and all around you, but that technology is also gonna improve. What if we have fMRI Apple Vision Pro goggles 10, 20 years from now? You'd be able to see and read what someone is thinking or even dreaming by just looking at them. A few years ago, I was talking to my coworker about this kind of stuff happening. Eventually, they are going to analyze all of our brain waves, are going to make us think of different things, and then they're going to save that brain pattern and put it to a machine and tell the machine, hey, this specific brain pattern means a red car, or in this case, a giraffe. And I told my coworker a few years ago before this was even announced that this is something that's going to happen because it's easily able to be done. Now this guy did give a little bit of false information. This stuff was, I, I did a little bit of research on it and this stuff is actually connected to OpenAI, which is a 
AI source code that is hooked up to the internet and he said that this was not done so that way, but it definitely was done that way. But nonetheless, very interesting future, kind of scary, kind of exciting. Where do you guys fall in on this kind of stuff? Yo, you need some help, bro? I'm always interested in exploring abandoned areas, but once I seen that guy in the corner, I don't think I would have had the courage to continue forth. I'd have been out of there. The mysterious handprints of Kodachrome Basin State Park in Utah are some of the most raw and interesting indigenous art I have ever seen. We don't know if they were made thousands of years ago or maybe in the last hundred or so. What do you think? Man, that's pretty interesting looking that those look like some massive hands mostly all right-handed hands at that but that's pretty crazy what is your thoughts on this because honestly i'm i'm clueless so many times everyone wants to know what i think on bashad on this uh, guy that i'm showing you in this photo a lot of you know him now but i saw him the first time at least 15 years ago on gaia tv and he didn't talk like this he talked like a weird E.T. Um, like remember E.T. from the movie? He had a little voice. He had... In Italy, we say the voice was sforzato. He was trying way too much to sound like this extraterrestrial soul that was possessing this body. Years ago, this was the story. That he would channel this extraterrestrial that would speak like that. Now, if you see his videos, he's speaking like his real persona, like the human part of him, which is only human. Let me put it this way. Any psychic that is a real psychic knows that he's faking it. Now, what he says is really nice. It's very life coachy type of stuff. And literally, you can find everything that he mentions in the work that Dolores Cannon did and Edgar Casey. Let me show you. These are the Edgar Casey books about the Law of One. If you read any of these, it's basically a lot of things that he's saying. I do not believe that he's channeling a real extraterrestrial. I do not believe that what he says is his. Everything I see him saying now is more for his audience or audience-oriented content. Is he a real extraterrestrial or hybrid? No. Does he channel a real extraterrestrial? No. Take it for what it is. Good teachings, good talking, but it's everyone else's work. I do not dislike Bouchard. I think that everything that he talks about is very positive. I think that it's really well spoken and it is very encouraging and I think that it's insightful. But I really do not believe that he is actually connecting to another being. I, I just really do not believe that. I think that he's just extremely insightful and extremely wise, and this is a role that he plays to help spread the message of people that are asking questions. But I could be completely wrong. Leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. I do know that there is a lot of people in here that do like Bashar, they do believe in him, and I think that's totally fine. And I know that there's a lot of people that don't. There's no such thing as a creator God. It's illogical. Why? It's a very simple answer to a very complicated question. If at home, there are some kids at home, and the dad, being a good carpenter, make a stool for every one of them. And they say, Dad, who created this tool? The mom said, Dad created it. 
Is it really dad who created that little wooden seat for all the children? Where did dad get the wood from? Where did dad get his skill from? Where did dad get the nails and the hammer from? Dad created that wooden seat for all the kids because dad has all those conditions that culminate into successfully completing that stool for the kids. But for the sake of simplicity, mom just said, dad created it. And the kids believe it. But when you analyze it in maturely in detail, can dad create that seat without nails, without wood, without all these conditions? So how is the cosmos created? How is the world created? They create it based on all the conditions fulfilled for its creation. So there's no such thing as God the creator. If God creates you, who creates God? Logically speaking, if nothing comes out without a reason, nothing comes out without conditions. If God creates you, you come out because of all these conditions fulfilled for you to come out to create you, then what are the conditions created for God to come out? If God comes out all by itself, no conditions, then you are beating the logic of existence. There's no such thing as things exist and come out without conditions. You name me one thing that comes out, boom, without conditions. You name me one thing. If that creates that stool for John, for Johnny, he would have tried his best to create it a good stool. He wouldn't create it a stool that is dangerous, that is imperfect, that is not proper to sit on. How come we all created with impediments? Stuttering. I'm a stutterer. I cannot speak. How come I have a brain that is not as normal as others? Helen Keller was born with no senses, no eyes to see, no ears to, to listen, and no tongue to talk. I created this world to test you, to see if you're good. If you're no good, down your hell. If you're good, up your heaven. Why, why do this? So it's not logical. Just purely on logic. Well, I, I'm not criticizing other religions. Don't get me wrong. I haven't mentioned one word of religion. I haven't. I'm just talking about a logical thinking of God creation. I respect all the religions, right? But I have doubts and queries about it. Then I don't want to blindly go into believing it. All right, that's number one. I respect all religions. I don't necessarily doubt what he's saying. I think that he is genuinely speaking what he believes. I personally also kind of fall in the line that if there's a God, it wouldn't surprise me if something created God. I, I really like that idea. God is our creator and he is the Alpha and the Omega, but that doesn't mean that nothing created God. You know, something might have and it's just undisclosed to us because it's not important to us and only thing that is important to us is God, our creator. But just because he is God, the Alpha, the Omega, that shouldn't necessarily mean that there is not another being or entity beyond God. There's probably many other entities beyond God. I, I mean, I personally cannot say, even if I've read the Bible and Bible basically does not speak of any other being from God other than what he has created, that doesn't mean that there's something missing out of the Bible that's been taken from us because the Bible has been altered so many times from different languages. Who knows what's not been put in that book? I am curious on your belief of this because I know there's a lot of people that watch this channel that are extremely religious and they are way more insightful than I am personally on religion. So I'd be curious to hear what your theories and your thoughts of God and if there is another entity beyond God or, or one that may have created God itself. Hey guys, Ruben here once more and uh, today I want to talk about the sun and the moon. According to the solar system, the moon has the shadow because of the earth in between the sun and the moon, correct? So here we go. Watch this. Okay, there is the moon. Okay, that's the moon. And that is the sun right there in the same sky. All right, that's the sun. That's the moon. It's approximately 3.35 right now in the afternoon. Now I'm going to show you what it correlates with. I honestly, I want to believe that the earth is flat. 
but I have a hard time believing it. I really cannot wait for the day to where I can see the Earth in its full self. I, I want to be able to go to space and actually look down upon Earth and be able to tell if it is round or if it's flat, because that would help me tremendously, because I truthfully do not think that I'll ever know. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And as always, if you were interested in any of these videos that we watched today, links will be down in the description below. And with that being said, have a good day.